Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about the value chain. This is the first part in a three-part series where I talk about value. This is value chain, then I'll focus on value grid, then I'll do a video comparing value chain to value grid. What is a value chain? A value chain is a set of activities that a company performs to deliver a valuable product or service for the market. Keyword here being valuable. It's all about generating value. It was first coined by Michael Porter as a business management concept in his book, Competitive Advantage, Creating and Sustaining Superior Performance. This is the same Porter as Porter's Five Forces, a fundamental concept in business. The value chain mindset asks you to focus on a business as a system of inputs, transformation processes, and then outputs. It's a very heavy process-oriented way of thinking, so it aligns well with certain types of engineering. This concept alone has changed the global business landscape. The value chain itself divides activities into two main areas. Primary activities, these are the essential activities that add value and provide a competitive advantage. This should be your core business. And then you have support activities, these are secondary activities that support the primary structure of the business and can make any primary activity more efficient and effective. Now let's dive into our primary and support activities. Primary activities consist of the following. Inbound logistics, everything coming from a supplier to your location. Operations, everything concerned with the process that converts your inputs into outputs. Many types of engineering live in this space. Industrial engineers, you're improving operations. Chemical engineers, you might be designing those operations. Outbound logistics, both the storage and the shipment of your outputs. So your inputs and processes that create your outputs, these outputs need to get to your customers somehow. This is outbound logistics. Marketing and sales, communicating and delivering the values and advantages of your service or product and service. So not the main service you provide, but all the activities involved with your output after receipt by customer. Handling complaints, product repairs, things of that nature. The support activities consist of infrastructure, so that's accounting, legal, finance, PR, quality insurance, and general management, among other things. When your company is delivering value to customers, you need someone to handle the money and the finances. That's accounting and finance. You need to make sure that legal troubles don't cost your company business. That's legal. You have to have a certain level of quality or it will hurt your brand or you'll be dealing with service too much. That's quality assurance. I won't go into examples for all of these, but you can understand how all these other departments are needed to support the main business. Technological development. So what technology is required to process inputs into outputs? Are you a manufacturing company? You manufacture things with machines, so you need hardware for that. Are you a digital design firm? What kind of software are you using? And again, what kind of procedures are in place for your employees to follow? Human resources. Running a company, of course, you need people to deliver the value. Someone has to hire these people, train these people, compensate them, and in some circumstances, fire them. Then you have procurement. Purchases from an outside source and all the decisions involved with said purchases. Are you going to go with a supplier that's slightly more expensive because they have a better history? Do you purchase from a supplier that is more nearby because it's better for your supply chain? These are the kind of questions that come up with procurement. So we've reviewed what the supply chain concept is, but how is it used? Well, it's used both by companies looking to improve their operations and by individuals or firms to analyze their competitors. A firm can focus on improving one primary activity to see profit and success in its industry and form a whole new business model. Imagine a regional distributor selected suppliers based on their distance from the distribution center. These decreased travel times would give this distributor a massive advantage in the inbound logistics activity and may even create a new category of hyperfast distributors. That is a very broad example, of course, but hopefully it illustrates how you can take the value chain concept and use it to focus on one primary activity to increase profit and competitiveness within your market. 
The value chain approach can be used to evaluate a company by potential shareholders even, so it's a useful tool for investment opportunities. Now, to better focus on the supply chain concept, let's use some real life examples. We'll start with Starbucks. Think five to 10 years after founding. We'll focus on the primary activities. Inbound logistics. Starbucks handles its own coffee bean procurement, ensuring that quality remains high. Operations. Starbucks has one of the most comprehensive training programs for entry-level employees in the retail coffee industry. Think of all the drinks and techniques a Starbucks barista has to know. Before coffee chains really caught on, this was a unique employee in that industry. Outbound logistics. Starbucks sells most merchandise directly through stores, keeping those profits in-house. But now, Starbucks sells coffee at grocery chains, expanding their market. Marketing and sales. Starbucks focuses on high-quality product offerings. That's how they position and advertise themselves. Service. Starbucks pioneered the third-place concept, where customers feel welcome to relax and make Starbucks a place between work and home. Baristas recognized regulars and made their drinks exactly to their preference. This is what allowed Starbucks to thrive. Strong operations supports the service. So you can see how different primary activities can work together to complement themselves. Imagine if Starbucks didn't have good enough operations to train their employees well enough. Then they wouldn't be able to offer their signature service that really made the customer feel welcome. If the baristas don't know your order and your name, you're not going to feel like Starbucks is that third place between home and work. A new activity that has been added to the value chain recently, or a new concept entirely in itself, is the virtual value chain. With the advent of smartphones and widespread high-speed internet, a new digital marketplace has emerged. Starbucks was able to capitalize on this virtual value chain using their app and star system. If you go to Starbucks frequently today, how often do you use the app? That wouldn't have been possible without the virtual marketplace. And now for our final example, let's focus on McDonald's. Inbound logistics. McDonald's has a strong hold on their low cost suppliers due to their large volume. This allows them to keep inbound prices low. Imagine a potato distributor. If they lose McDonald's as a customer, imagine how much that hurts their business. Operations. McDonald's puts a strong emphasis on franchising most locations, thus helping to ensure management is effective due to equity in the location. If you own the store you're managing, you care a lot more about if that store succeeds or not. Also, McDonald's has been able to adapt to changing markets. The McCafe to meet new coffee demands, salads to meet new healthier demands, and think about every other seasonal food they've offered. So this category goes in both operations and marketing and sales. If McDonald's didn't offer these new products, they might not have the same level of sales. Outbound logistics. McDonald's was one of the pioneers of fast food, ensuring that customers came in and left much quicker than a traditional restaurant. Outbound logistics starts as soon as you're delivering your product, whether that's on a truck to a customer a thousand miles away, or it's a happy meal to a little kid standing at your counter. Marketing and sales. McDonald's has had a number of strong marketing campaigns that have made several symbols and sayings synonymous with McDonald's. The golden arches, I'm loving it, etc. And finally, service. McDonald's is known for fast service while still meeting quality minimums. Think about when McDonald's first came out. Your alternative was a sit-down restaurant or making hamburgers at home. Think about how quick and novel McDonald's would have been back in the day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you now understand how a corporation can focus on its primary activities to drive or enhance its business while using support activities to make those primary activities more efficient. The next time you go into a store you like, think about what their value chain would look like. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Up next is a video on the value grid.